So, this is obviously called electrochemical cells. And as you see, there are two types of electrochemical cells. We are going to be talking only about one of these during this video. And the first one, and the one we're going to be talking about, is called voltaic cell. The second one we'll talk about later in the next video is called an electrolytic cell. So these are the two electrochemical cells, a voltaic cell and an electrolytic cell. So the cell we're going to be talking about today is called the voltaic cell. Another name for that cell is the galvanic cell. And the big deal about this cell is chemical energy is being used to produce electrical energy. So chemical energy is being changed to produce electricity. And since we're producing electricity, this is an exothermic reaction. Exothermic reaction. Now I'm going to show you a setup and then we're going to put that setup on this. Okay, so here's the setup. I'm going to have it on the board. Here is my copper solution, and here is my copper solid. Here is my zinc solution. Here is my zinc solid. And this crazy thing is a salt bridge. So what's happening is we're going to have to look on reference table J to see which way the electrons flow. And then we're going to set this up on the smart board. Now, after you've seen the smart board, we just did the smart board, and now we're going to take a peek and see how much electricity this system actually produces. So I'm going to complete the circuit, and right now it is saying 0.97. So 0.97 volts is what we are doing. Yep, 0.97 is the highest voltage. That's it. So I just showed you the laboratory setup. And so this is the same setup which I put on the board as you have just seen. So here's what we have to do. We have copper, solid copper, which is copper neutral. And we have solid zinc, which is zinc neutral. Now what we have to do is we have to figure out which way the electrons are going to flow. So in order to figure that out, we have to go to reference table J. So here's reference table J. We have to find both metals. Here's zinc and here is copper. And remember our rule, electrons always flow down like a waterfall. Instead of water, it's electrons flowing. So electrons will be flowing from zinc down to copper. So zinc is our ox element and copper is our red or reduction element. And remember what we talked about before. The oxidation element is responsible for reducing copper. So this is not only the ox element, it's the reduction or red agent. And here, the reduction element will rip off zinc's electrons, so the reduction element is also the agent responsible for oxidizing that. So that is the ox agent. So now we know which way the electrons are going to flow. They're going to be flowing from zinc to copper. So we have to make those arrows from zinc to copper. So there's zinc, so the electrons are flowing this way. So they're flowing from zinc to copper. So that means zinc is being oxidized. So what we have to do is the oxidation half reaction. So we have this. Zn neutral yields 
Zn plus 2, which is in solution. But why does it yield that? Because the electrons are leaving. So it's Zn neutral yields Zn plus 2 plus 2 electrons. So zinc neutral after losing the electrons is turning into zinc plus 2 in the solution. Okay? Now here, the electrons are flowing into copper, so this one is copper plus 2 plus 2 electrons yields copper neutral. So here, the copper plus 2 is going to the bar. And why is the copper plus 2 going to the bar? Because this bar has a ton of electrons from zinc in it. So it attracts the copper plus 2. So here are our two reactions. This is the ox half reaction. This is the red half reaction. Now, what's going to happen is this. Since this zinc is losing electrons, it's being oxidized. Whatever element's being oxidized, it's going to lose weight. So over here, the zinc loss of mass. So the zinc bar will lose mass, while the copper bar. is gaining mass. Now, also, remember this is the salt bridge and it has Na plus Cl minus ions in it. And remember, that's the way it conducts electricity. So what's happening is this for conducting electricity. Electrons are leaving the zinc bar or electrode, going through the wire, going through the voltmeter, coming down through the wire and going to here. Then what's happening is the ions take the charge here, go through the salt bridge, and here. So it's a complete circuit. So the salt bridge is used for ion migration. If I were to pull the salt bridge out, that would shut down the whole reaction because the circuit is broken. The voltmeter would read zero. Okay, so the salt bridge has to be there for it provides a pathway for iron ion migration. Now, what's happening in this solution? Well, since the zinc neutral is turning into positive ions, we can't have a positive buildup here, or the electrons won't want to leave. So what comes down to save the day from the salt bridge? If this is turning really positive, then what happens is the Cl minus ions from the salt bridge come down here and kind of neutralize that solution so the electrons can leave. Well, over here, all the positive copper ions are going to the bar, so we're left with NO3 minus. It's too negative. So it would repel the electrons. So we have to neutralize that negative. So the Na plus comes down here. Na plus comes down here and neutralizes the NO3 minus 1. So this is how the entire thing works. You definitely need a salt bridge. And this electrode, the electrode that is losing electrons is called the anode. That's the anode, losing electrons. And if you're losing electrons, that's oxidation. So at the anode, oxidation occurs. And what we call that very quickly is anox. So anox is the anodes being oxidized. So what do we call this one? Well, here, reduction is occurring, and this electrode is called the cathode. So this is the cathode, and reduction is occurring. So we have N-ox over there, and we have red cat. Reduction cathode over here. So N-ox and red cat. The 
anode always loses weight because it's losing electrons. The cathode always gains weight because it's gaining electrons and getting the Cu plus 2 ions to the bar. So the next thing we have to do is we have to make an equation out of all of this. Well, here's what we start with. We are starting with zinc neutral right there. And then over here, we're starting with copper plus 2, obviously hooked to that. So the equation will be this, zinc neutral, which means solid, plus Cu plus 2. NO3 minus 1, 2 yields. So this is the anode. The copper plus 2 is, this is going to be what, so this is going to be what gets oxidized. This is going to be what gets reduced. And so it turns into this. Zn plus 2 NO3 minus 1, 2 plus Cu neutral, which means that's solid. Now, this is the equation for the voltaic cell. Now watch. Remember to find the oxidation state. If I didn't give you the diagram, and I just gave you this equation, remember the ox element and the red element are always on the reactant side. Always. You never pick them over here. So the ox element loses electrons, charge goes up. So we have to find something that the charge goes up in. Well, look at zinc is neutral, and zinc goes to a plus 2. So this has to be the ox element right here, zinc neutral. So let's, again, write the ox half. The oxidation half reaction would be Zn neutral yields Zn plus 2 plus 2 electrons. We did that before. Now, so this right here is the ox element. So we have Cu plus 2 N and O. Well, N and O look the same on both sides, so their oxidation state doesn't change. So this one goes from Cu plus 2 to Cu neutral. So remember, the reduction element gains electrons and their electron charge goes down because you're gaining negatives. So it looks like this. We're going from Cu plus 2 to Cu neutral. So if you gain electrons, your charge is going to go down. It's going to get more negative. So here's what the red half looks like. The red half reaction will be Cu plus 2 plus 2 electrons yield Cu neutral. Okay, so remember, both ox and red elements are found on the left-hand side or the reactant side. Oxidation, losing electrons, the charge goes up because you're losing negatives. Reduction is you're gaining electrons, and so since you're gaining negatives, the charge is going to go down. So. 0 to plus 2, charge goes up, that's my ox element. Plus 2 to neutral, charge goes down, that's my red element. Okay, and the other thing you have to look at is you have to have the same amount of electrons gained and lost. Well, here I have two electrons lost and I have two electrons gained. So that is perfect. That's perfect equation for this. So that's what the electro, that's what, so that is what the voltaic cell or the galvanic cell looks like. And what's happening is through a chemical reaction, you are making electricity. Okay? So before we go into electrolytic cells, I want to review voltaic cells one more time. So, voltaic cells. First, most important thing, a chemical reaction produces electricity. And remember, the chemical reaction only deals with gaining and losing electrons. Nothing to do with protons, nothing to do with neutrons. It's always spontaneous. Remember reference table J? Electrons always flow from the top elements to the bottom elements. So it's always spontaneous. And it's A plus B yields C plus energy. 
that is an exothermic reaction and it produces electricity. So the energy that this produces is electricity. It uses a salt bridge. Remember salt bridge, we salt said bridge. it's used for ion migration. Remember electrons can't swim so the current must be taken by the ions. At the anode, which is one of the metal bars, oxidation always occurs. And in this case, since this is where we get the electrons from, it's a negative anode in the voltaic cell. Reduction always occurs at the cathode. And the cathode in and on. And the most amazing thing is every single battery that we use, like these batteries, these dry cell batteries, they have an anode and a cathode. So every single battery that you've ever used in your life, like in flashlights or whatever, they're voltaic cells. They're always spontaneous, but they eventually run out. So that is the voltaic cell, always spontaneous. Now we're gonna talk about the electrolytic cell which is never spontaneous. So here's the electrolytic cell, totally opposite of the voltaic cell. So the electrolytic cell, first and foremost, it is never spontaneous. This reaction will not work unless you put energy in, in the form of electricity. So all electrolytic cells are endothermic reactions. A plus B plus energy, which is electricity, yields C, which is the product. So electricity must be used to produce a chemical reaction, exactly opposite of voltaic cell. Now, but the same thing occurs, oxidation occurs at the anode, and reduction occurs at the cathode, which is exactly the same as the voltaic cell. The only difference is the anode in an electrolytic cell is positive, and the cathode in an electrolytic cell is negative. Number four, anions. So what's an anion? It's a negative ion. Well, why do they call it an anion? Because they're attracted to the anode. So anions are negative ions attracted to the positive anode. So cations are positive ions and they are attracted to the negative cathode. So that's anion and cation. And one of the things the electrolytic cells is used to produce, remember group one and group two metals are never found in nature by themselves because they're way too reactive. So if we use an electrolytic cell, we can separate them. So the final thing for electrolytic cells, produce group one and group two metals that are never found alone in nature. So I'm gonna put one up on the board right now. So this is how an electrolytic cell works. Way different from voltaic. There's our battery that has the energy in it. It's hooked to two electrodes. We'll talk about which one's which later. Now, we have to dump in the middle, we have to have fused or melted ionic compound. How come fused or melted? Because fused or melted have free ions. We couldn't use pure solid ionic compound because ionic compound that's in the solid state does not conduct electricity. So, this is fused Na plus Cl minus ions. Now, since the electrodes are made of the same substance, how do you figure out which way the electrons flow? Well, they always flow the same way, up to the positive terminal and down from the negative. So here's how the electrons flow, up to the positive and down to the negative, which means this is gonna be positive and this is going to be negative. So what's happening is this is the flow of electrons. If this is losing electrons or Leo, this has to be oxidation occurring here. And if it's oxidation, this is the anode. So on this side, an ox. 
oxidation is occurring at the is occurring at the anode. All right, and on this side they're gaining electrons, which is GER gain electrons reduction. So this is red cat. So remember what that means. Reduction is happening at the cathode. So we have anox on this side. We have red cat on this side. So let's see what's happening over here. Over here, since this is positive, it's going to be attracting the negative ion chlorine. And since that is attracting to the anode, Cl- is the anion. And remember, since that's anode, oxidation is going to occur. And this is kind of tough, this oxidation. So I start out with Cl minus, Cl minus, and it's going to lose. So it's look like this, Cl. But the problem is chlorine can't be by itself, so it's Cl2 neutral. And if there's two chlorines there, there's got to be two chlorines there. Each chlorine loses one electricity. One, uh, each chlorine loses one electron. So plus two electrons. That's very difficult. So at the anode, it's taking chlorine ions. They're losing electrons and they're forming chlorine gas. So chlorine gas is produced at this anode. Okay, that is oxidation. Now on the other side, the cathode, since it's negative, is attracting the positive ions. So what's happening is the positive ion is going to get reduced. So the cation equals Na+, plus, and it's going to be reduced. So here's what this looks like. Na plus plus 1E yields Na neutral. So this bar is going to be totally coated with pure sodium. And that's how we get sodium. Because you can't find sodium by itself. It's too reactive. So here are the two reactions. Now, they're not balanced. This one's losing two. This one's only gaining one. So what we have to do is we have to multiply this by 2. And then when we write the equation out, here's what it looks like. We start out with 2Cl minus, 2Cl minus, plus 2Na plus. And we produce Cl2 neutral gas plus 2Na solid. So that's the equation. That's what it looks like. And this is how you produce metals that are not found in nature by themselves. And the hardest part of this whole electrolytic cell will be the oxidation. And that's a tough one. Okay, that's how you produce it. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is, and we'll do an experiment also, is electroplating. So this is a typical electroplating setup, and I have the lab that we're going to do with it. But first we're going to do it on the board, then I'll show you the demonstration. So here's our battery. We have a copper bar, a copper solution, and our fork is made of tin. Okay, so the biggest, most important thing is we need to get the copper ions to coat that tin fork. Well, how do we get the copper ions over there? We have to make sure that the electrons are coming down into the tin fork to attract the copper ions. So whatever object is to be electroplated must be hooked to the negative cathode. So the electrons are going to go like this. They're going to go up to the positive, and then they're going to shoot down this way. So this is going to be negative. This is going to be positive. So the negative electrons are flowing down into the tin fork. So since this is positive and it's Leo, it's losing electrons, this is the anox. Anox. 
So oxidation is occurring over here. So the oxidation half reaction would be Cu neutral yields Cu plus two plus two electrons. So what's happening is that bar is getting oxidized and the copper neutral is going out into the solution like that. So this copper bar is being oxidized or rusted, it's getting smaller. Okay, so the electrons are going up and they're going down into the fork. So that is the oxidation half that occurs there. Now over here, this is where a lot of my students get screwed up. Whatever that fork is made of, that has nothing to do with the half reaction, nothing at all. It's being coated. That's why it has nothing to do with what it's made of. So over here, since this is gaining electrons, or GER, gain electrons reduction, this is red cat. Red cat. Now, what's happening is, like I said, nothing with tin. It's with the copper plus two ions. So it looks like this. Cu plus two plus two E yields Cu neutral. So where in the world do this copper plus two get electrons? They're attracted to the negative fork. So they go like this. So that's where they get the electrons and now the copper will coat the fork. Okay, so the big deal in electroplating is the object to be electroplated has to be hooked to the negative cathode which would mean you got to hook it to the negative terminal of the battery. All right, now we're going to check out and look at my demonstration. Okay, so this setup, like I said, I have set up right over here. And it's been working for quite a while. So here's the battery, because remember electrolytic cells or electroplating need a voltage source in order to work. So I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to see what happens here. So that's the copper bar. This is a copper solution. So there should be a little bit of copper on this fork. And I hope you can see that. Can you see the copper on that fork? So this is called electroplating. And this is actually how cheap jewelry is also made because they take copper and then they electroplate silver on top of it. So if you've ever had a necklace or a ring that's silver and all of a sudden you look and you have a green circle around your finger or your neck that means that the silver is worn off and the copper is interacting with your sweat so that's cheap jewelry and that's made by electroplating